Bristol's wealth of experimental artists, there's one band that seems to go further than anyone else. What did you think when you first heard Giant Swan? Um, well, I imagine that you just stuffed your lung. <laughs> <laughs> Two of them basically stand facing each other with about 20 guitar effects pedals, electronic drum kits, etc. each, and turn Robin's grunts, coughs, screams, and thwacks of his guitar into terrifying, hour long improvised sets of incredible dance music. I'm Alistair Shuttleworth, and this is Giant Swan. A lot of the other artists and the bills that we share are very kind of austere yeah, yeah. and regimented and you know they just plug in and play and it's you know they twist a few knobs and look really serious and I think we're you know we come from an environment where we get excited by you know extremity and, and improvisation is a you know it's quite a big scary word for a lot of folks and we enjoy that but there are definitely like markers we need to hit but it's yeah it's getting there that's exciting and that leads to all sorts of different you know different like end points. Of like, yeah. Where do those sounds come from? A lot of it because we come from like, I guess, like a um, background. So like all of our stuff is, you know, comes from yeah, like guitar pedals and like from amps and sort of playing really. So a lot, a lot of that is just yeah, guitar pedals. And sort of the sounds that we learn from the naturals. The chance to pick up a bit. Sound like 
chances are it will spring up and then it will be replaced by another one. But it's yeah, it's just recycling really. Yeah. It just comes from jamming as well. Like we're sort of jamming like a loop or something, and then probably like maybe here and like good luck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's so brutal, but then sort of euphoric at the same time. And you can, it was great when we were touring with them in, in April through France for our bands to kind of like have them on before us just completely freak people out because they're expecting another sort of, sort of two, four piece bands, two guitars and stuff. Suddenly put them on stage and half the people are just like, what the fuck is this? And leave, get a drink. And then the other half are just the opposite, like, what the fuck is this? I'm staying and never seen anything like this before. Yeah. <laughs> saying oh, I need to do some music for a, a, a project I was working on at the time and then we did some you know he recorded the music and then he mixed it and we were like oh that's actually really good that and you know then I wouldn't have gone to anyone else but not because you know it was just like Harry's my friend and I you know and he probably one of the only people who had the patience to record something I was doing and that became Giant Swan. It came from us an experiment really it was kind of always used as a bit of like a, an exercise to help stuff with the natural yeah. Explore some of the sounds we want to use for the naturals, but you don't want to waste the time with the other two there trying to find like that little setting. Yeah. It took a, it took a, I remember it took a really long time to feel comfortable kind of addressing Giant Swan as a separate entity. Yeah, just you know, the, the way other people speak to us about our music is, is strange because it's so dislocated and divorced from where we started it. You know, like we were literally jamming for a year and a half in Harry's bedroom and we both had time off. some of our best friends and we're so lucky to kind of like get to tour with them and see them and stuff like that but if I was a, just a punter to see, to see those bands I'd be like oh my god what like this yeah. is incredible and you can see it happen and it's with the naturals yeah. as well seeing other people just looking around like they've never seen that before yeah. in, in a city with such a sort of proud history of electronic music how do you, how do you see yourselves as fitting into that we don't <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean, like, Giant Swan was instigated by a friend of ours called Amos, Amos Child, who plays as DJ Jabu in the Young Echo Collective, which is a really, really forward thinking group of makers and musicians. As far as I'm concerned, like, that's what inspired us to kind of be more kind of. Know, thoughtful with it, like to actually think about it as opposed to relying on a heritage which none of us really acknowledge. Like, yeah, it's you know, it's, it's good and it's there, but like, I mean, in terms of how the heritage of Bristol has affected us, like going to see Negus Melody every year at St. Paul's Carnival or you know, teachings in dub, going to the Black Swan to watch you know, dubstep and to, and to really be moved by that. You know, the subloaded nights that used to happen at the Croft like five or six years ago, I mean, like, seriously, like, that was. You know, you could have been anywhere else in the country and it wouldn't have been that good. Do you imagine more people making music like yours? It's probably never. No, I do. 
then not. we wouldn't be able to <laughs> like, no, no, no one, one should make any music like ours. <laughs> it's ours. <laughs> um, yeah. I honestly, I, like, I've never thought about our music being, like, in you know, inspiring or anything. Like, if anyone comes to our shows or hears the record and wants to further that idea, like, whatever I, I mean, like. I'm 99% certain that whatever anyone thinks about our music, it's probably wrong. <laughs> not in a, not to like, you know, but just cause like it's ours, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and we do it for our reasons. And if anyone, you know, would take anything from it that would then be put into a positive project, like that's great. But I don't, I don't have ever thought about that before. Actually, that's a, good question, that's a really good question. Is. As far as we're concerned, like it's, there's no duty, like we enjoy it and it's not going to last forever. But if something could come from it, then yeah, sure, like we'll, we'll stamp it, like great. I think that's it. Yeah. Think, like, <laughs> as soon as we start kind of thinking about if we owe anyone anything, I think it just depends on why we do it. Yeah. Like, we just got to do it for us and people like that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, we do it because we're friends. Like we owe it to each other as much as anything else. Like we owe each other that kind of courtesy of, you know, listening and being respectful and, and, and having an open mind. And then when we play, like yeah, we come to like bring it like fully. And, and yeah, like I said, if someone wants to take something from that and, and re-endorse it in some way, then sure. But yeah, we'll just keep doing what we do until it doesn't happen.